Hi, I'm Clever Pigeon. This is Anodyne 2 Return to Dust. Um, it was released on August the 12th, and I did submit it for the initial submissions period, um, but I figured since it's eligible for the second one as well, I'd give it a shot there. Um, I'm recording a new video with some updated strats in the run. Uh, just before we get started, I need to make sure that double health and invincibility are both off, which they are, and skip dialogue for speedruns and 60fps lock are both on, which they are. So, we're good to go. And time is in 3, 2, 1, go. So, there's a little intro cutscene to start with. Um, and we actually get to skip one of the cutscenes, or two of the cutscenes even, um, by jumping out of the trigger at the start. Um, so that saves a decent bit of time. Nice little strap. Um, so this is the first area of the game, the album and shore. There are these three yoke figures which we need to shrink into and collect the little items at the end. Uh, this functions as the game's sort of basic tutorial area. Um, there are three of these. Can't remember if I mentioned how many there are already, but there are three of them and it's not too difficult. It's a sort of quite a cozy area. Um, you can see I'm starting to collect dust. Dust is very important in this game. Um, and we'll get to why in a little bit. Uh, by the way, um, fair warning, this game does have a content warning for photosensitive epilepsy. There are flashing lights in it um, because of a strat that involves spamming the pause menu. Um, yeah, that's important to note. I moved out the way of the gate there because the gate actually talks um, in a little surreal touch um, if you do hit it with an enemy. So you can see in 2D in these, um, that's the first bit of pause, uh, pause menu usage. Uh, in the 2D sections, y you walk around with a vacuum cleaner. It's a bit like uh, Game Boy Zelda. In 3D there's basic platforming um, and exploration. And you can also turn into a car, which we'll get to soon enough. Um, and that pause menu buffering, um, if you spam the pause menu, it resets your vertical momentum. So, um, you can use that to cross gaps that you might not be able to otherwise save a bit of time this is the center um we'll be seeing it a decent bit uh, this is where all the dust is for um, and on the right was Palisade, on the left was Sea Sarmist. We saw them in the intro as well. Um, but here's our first taste of quote unquote real danger um, in Drifting Pollen. And here's another little strap that's new and do. Um, so I 
uh, grabbed a um, well, that's me forgetting my splits. Um, I grabbed uh, a block early and hit the boss with it. Um, just sort of keeps it stunned for longer at the top, so you've got a bit of time to hit it. Here we're going to see the car movement. You can turn to a car, makes getting around a bit quicker. Um, but we're going to move on into the first um, larger dungeon of the game. Called Mysteria Wisel. Each one has the name for character. And we're also introduced to these Dimension Dive mini games. Almost like little rhythm games hold the direction on the d-pad or control stick um, and the corresponding dust thing gets eliminated by your little shield thing and that lets you shrink into the dust infected character So between here and the next uh, mini dungeon, hold on this way first, um, we want 50 pieces of dust. Our canister in the vacuum cleaner holds 60. Um, we want 50 total. Getting a bit more doesn't matter too much. Uh, in fact, it might be beneficial, depending on how well our dust luck turns out uh, in the third and fourth areas. Officially, they're called key flies. They follow you about. And we've got to put them in these blocks. These baby slimes, we can't kill them. If we kill a baby slime, or a baby slime gets killed by another enemy, um, a gate comes up. We take advantage of that there to um, knock down one gate but bring another up and then um, using that beat the room early I just set up a boss skip there um, that one doesn't uh, doesn't affect anything past just skipping the boss it doesn't result in any danger to the game a few things can result in soft locks like that um, but that one is fine to do and there are a few more bosses that we can skip like that a bit later on we make our way quickly To the second character, Bran Malikden, her name is. A little mini game to start off with. None of them are too difficult, and they're not very long either. Might not be a bad space for a donation um, if this were to get in now that I think about it. And 
Bran, the way the dust has affected her, the dust makes people sort of ill and forget their inhibitions and reduces them to their base emotions. So the dust has made Bran angry. Um, so her insides, her mindscape are a fiery construction site. Do a little moonwalk, grab some dust. Nice. One cycle. This gate I'll explain in a minute. It's a bit peculiar. Um, the sign on the rock explains that the gate hates slimes but doesn't want to see them hurt. So you have to make sure they're all lit on fire. But if you light the slime on fire and then kill it, uh, it doesn't make the gate angry for some reason. So we can take advantage of that. Um, and that tricky one, instead of moving a block out of the way, you can uh, skip a cycle by just shooting the slime towards it. I'm really good on dust here actually, so I'm not going to worry too much about collecting more. Um, and now we're just making our way back down. Put the key in the box. And we reach another of these um, nano assassins they're called. You can skip this one, but it's like pixel precise. Uh, it's very hard, so I'm not going to worry about it. I'm just going to dispatch it. It doesn't take too long. Um, I'm really good on extra dust here, which is quite handy. Sorry if my drops aren't so good in the next two areas. That'll be um, helpful. A little bit of dialogue here with Palisade. Then we're going to make use of the pause. Oh. Got the pause spamming again to fly all the way back. We need to return to the centre to deposit our dust. Um, into the dust prism at the centre of... I don't think I mentioned the name of the city. The name of the city is C-Note. Um, or Cenote, but most people pronounce it C-Note, I think. Um, and what we have to do is put dust into the prism so that it can channel the energy of the dust and clear the dust storm which is surrounding the city that we can explore further out. Here is character number three, uh, Gustine Papellum, her name is. Um, her entire body has turned into taste buds effectively and she now has because of the dust an uninhibited desire to taste everything um, one of the more surreal predicaments you find um you find the characters infected with um, this place has been semi-affectionately referred to as the tongue zone before um, and you'll see why that's why <laughs> hey come on come on Hit out by mistake, that's fine.
with some of the tongues will uh, pull themselves back automatically, some of them won't. Oh no, come on. True. Right. Here you need to lick that guy. Um, and he has some kind of disturbing dialogue about how much he enjoys it, but I don't know. This game, as you can see, is it's fairly surreal in uh, in presentation. This one you can't skip. But it's not too easy to deal with. Not too easy, not too difficult to deal with, excuse me. And that's the end of Gustine Papellum. Um, this is the first time I've run these splits with all the boss uh, skips, so that is reflected in all the golds and time saved and such. After that, a little bit of dialogue um, and exposition. Our next uh, character to go into is the Great Guan. Uh, we get to demonstrate um, ride scale clipping. Um, in corners, you can often use ride scale to uh, clip into walls, which comes in very handy. We need to talk to the Great Guam's four babies before we try to clean her. The Guam's have lost sight of the vision that the center, this godlike entity, has provided for them, and now they wallow in dirt. Um, and the Great Guam pleads with you to help her and her children uh, rediscover their true higher purpose. Here we get some interesting, um, interesting mechanics across rooms. Um, you'll see what I mean. There are some rooms a bit later that use light and dark um, in an interesting way. Alright, so I've got enough dust. Um, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, I have, but... If there's some easy dust to get along the way, I might pick it up. Alright, this is what I mean. This is what I mean with the light and dark. And then enemies appear in the... ...dark that don't appear in the light. You can never reach that dust on the bottom, no matter how hard you try, it's just out of reach. Uh, turn the light switch on, a little bit disturbing. Set up another boss skip. And that's Great Guam.
love a little bit of dialogue. Oh, interesting. Hello, hitbox. Uh, one of the stranger angles of ride scale clip. More pause. Spam to get over. Back to the lift. And now a new step has been been added. We've collected four cards, and four cards um, is the right number to upgrade the dust prism. So the glandy lock seed that we got from the Kalaza, the flesh tree thing inside the egg, um, connects us to the center and also allows us to convert dust crystals at the end of each area into cards. Now we just need to talk to Sea Psalmist and Palisade and they clear the storm. They unload the center's dust. And now we're free to go and explore outside the city. There are three more characters to view outside the city. Um, and this place also introduces getting cards in 3D in little chests. Some of these clips can be a bit finicky. I can jump up this slope. I'm actually, I'm going to do some pause spam, but I'm going to use the enter key on my keyboard for it. Because this is one of the... More finicky ones. Excellent. Right. So, there's a character below us, um, but we've entered from a second entry point into his mindscape. Uh, this is Geoff Agrosite. Uh, what entering from the top did allowed us to... Uh, it allowed us to skip the um, Dimension Dive minigame for Geoff, which is a decent time save. Um, on the way up, we just need to clear off these gravestones. And also... Um, quite important to grab that key. That key will persist with us. Um, even though we're going to be leaving this 2D area in a moment. Uh, but we'll come back and it will be here with us again. It's very handy. So this is where we would spawn had we entered Geoff from his actual body. Uh, but we can jump up here, go back into Geoff's office. He's the mayor of this town um, as part of his little story arc. And now instead of um, reading gravestones, we talk to people inside Geoff's mind to open the gates and advance the area. And you'll see, as I mentioned, that the key has persisted with us, which is handy because now we can use it instead of backtracking uh, from getting it earlier. get to use that uh, fire spewer behind the 
uh, boomerang throwing plant thing. You get to uh, hit it. You get to use the spewer to hit the boomerang thing. Uh, nice little clever touch. You only need to talk to the people who have corresponding gravestones. So you'll see, as on this screen, there's an extra person. But she wasn't there um, in the gravestone version of this area. Also, this gate's still open. Um, we did need to talk to Geoff's gravestone, but not the corresponding little Geoff. Lovely. Little cutscene. And this is Geoff. We're gonna use some funky um, slope collision to jump up, make our way out. Um, we're not going straight to the next character. We are going to Blue Vale South. This is Blue Vale West. Um, Oh, oh no, what do I do? I messed that up. I messed that up big. Okay. That's fine. I'll just hop up. Right. Oh, I messed that up. That wasn't great. Okay. But anyway, we need to collect this card. There we go. It can be a bit finicky, the pausing. I'm trying to manage all the different buttons to press sometimes. Anyway, the next thing we're doing is dropping off the four cards that we've collected now and some dust. So we got one extra card in Geoff from the chest that we got to with the key. Um, this area also introduces the concept of extra cards uh, within people's mindscapes. Um, and then we got a few of them. Uh, we got a few of them in 3D as well. So two in 3D, one from the crystal, and. One from the chest. Wait a second, I've just gone down. Um, there we go. And there's a dust drop thing here, so we use this one instead of the one there. It's just a little closer to where we need to be. Now I can head off to our next um, individual who needs cleaning, Iwasaki Entomo. game's going to hit us with another burst of surreality. Is that a word? I don't know, but we're going to get hit with it. Nah, there's a clip you can do there, but this isn't too much difficult. And I missed the clip, so why not? Right, so now we're in an underwater tree cave. And Iwasaki, he's up here. He's a bit upset because the tree master um, who crafts the best tree sculptures in all of this island, knew the land, isn't responding to his letters. Uh, he runs a fan club for the tree master. Uh, and he says, why isn't the tree master responding to me? It must be the dust. 
We're not sure if it is actually dust, but we better clean them anyway. So in we go. I want to keep track of my dust count because by the time I have uh, cleaned all three of the people in the blue veil, I need to have between my vacuum and the prism 200 dust uh, to initiate the next section of the game. Sorry, right. Some funny behaviour there with the ice cube. I haven't seen that before. Ow. Right, that's fine. I need to go and collect this key. I can make a nice little walk through that arc of ice cubes without getting hit. Quite neat. Quite cool looking. Collecting a bit of dust along the way. These snowmans track our movement and after a certain amount of time will explode. Or if they hit us or bought another enemy. We can hide ourselves from this one here. On the other side of the block. We reach the top of the snowy forest within Iwasaki and end up looking at a beautiful aurora. But we gotta go back down because there's an extra card in here. And there's our extra card. Oh yeah, so in C-Note, the dust crystals picked up. They gave us 12 dust each. Um, they've been buffed a bit to cope with the new amounts of dust we need. So each one will now give us 36 dust. Quite handy. Right, this is the tree master's house. You can talk to the house and it reveals that the tree master is actually just a regular guy who sculpts trees. Um, but we don't need to talk to the house. We can spark, uh, that's what it's called, the little shooty thing. We can spark straight back into the um, letterbox and resolve things. It's possible to get into the uh, Tree Master's Garden early and go through the letterbox, but it softlocks Iwasaki and prevents us from getting the extra card that he has. So, can't use it. Now we make our way out. Use some of that geometry to push ourselves up just enough up the wall to get over those logs. I need to pay attention to my dust count here. I'm not great at maths, but let's see what I've got. Oh great, perfect. Nice and easy. I need 50 more, uh, which shouldn't be too difficult to get. Um, so now we're going into the next person, Conway Yonsti. Gonna pause over this gate instead of going the long way round. From the highest point here we can jump up, skip a little bit of platforming. And this is long way. Uh, she says her brother, quote unquote, Clonway, is infected with the dust. Uh, so we need to um, 
dive into Clonway to clean him. Uh, who, Clonway looks suspiciously like a giant robot head, I might add. But pay no mind. This is a lot of people's favourite music in the game, in Clonway. Inspired a bit by a sort of... Uh, it's got a little bit of a J-pop vibe to it, in its inspirations. Now, Clonway is structured uh, into test chambers. And we've got this... Ghost Conway following. Um, following us and mirroring our movements. And if he touches the gas, he dies. But he can also convert the spikies into uh, ghost things as well. And then they move around and we can use them to hit switches. That's test chamber one. Out of the way. Test chamber two introduces these little walk pads. Would kind of like some dust from this, thank you. Great. Just to prevent having to grind for it later. can spin the little Clonway ghost round when you're talking to these people at the end uh, because your movement is locked but his direction isn't. So that's a fun little thing. Call, we call it the Clonway spin. Uh, it's very important. <laughs> that actually does nothing but it's a lot of fun. Not really dust I need, but it might be nice to have, I don't know. Right, need to hit those switches with Conway. Oh, I didn't spin him. That's fine. We got him one spin. In these little rooms at the end of the test chambers, Clonway blocks your way. You can't walk past him, so you have to destroy the little ghost Clonway. Uh, we've been followed by Lonway's nano drone the whole time. Um, and here she reveals, actually, Lonway truly is a robot head. And she synthesized the dust to experiment with it. Um, but anyway, there's Clonway's end dialogue. He doesn't say much. He's a robot head. All right, lovely. Another little cutscene. From here, we can jump on Glonway. We need to go and get the last card. And from there we can make our way back to the prison, drop off our dust.
So, Palisade visits us just before because she's made something for us, but oh dear. Uh, something's gone a bit wrong. And. Something happened to Palisade. Oh dear. Nova's hurt as well. So, we received a vision from Palisade, and we need to go where it tells us. So, off we go. Uh, there's a tight um, cycle I can make. I'll see if I can do it. I doubt I'll do it. Um, it is tough. But it's possible to make this journey without um, being forced out of the car thing. But unfortunately, it was not to be. You know, spam really hard here to levitate over. Hey, Daff, thanks a lot. I appreciate your high quality viewership. Um, right. So here we're doing perhaps the cardinal sin of someone who's against the nano dust. We're crossing through into the dust storm. But this is where Palisade told us to go, so what, is, what are we supposed to do? fall over at the start of each new loading zone. We just have to do that. Right. We're forced into slow walk here. But if we jump at the right time, we can avoid falling over there. I'm going to jump up here. We are supposed to spark into this little fruit, but this dog thing gets us before we can uh, and we're forced to fall over again but it doesn't take too long come over here there we go that'll do right now we're entering a portion of the run called dustbound village it is quite different from the game so far. It's still a sort of 2D Zelda-like, but things change a bit. Um, and this is reflected in the story and the dialogue. Um, this is a point of great realisation for Nova, um, our player character. But um, For the moment, the most thing, the most important thing that you'll note in um, in terms of gameplay is that the screen starts scrolling suddenly. It's not locked to one screen per screen, as it were. First thing to do is visit this called the Clearing of the Binding. Um, and we've got to talk to these new characters. This is Drem. This is Elegy Beauty. And Nova isn't sure what she thinks of them, but in any case, she needs to go and find Palisade. So off we go.
we've been told there's a train down here. It's called the Kaikilla train. You're supposed to um, suck on that nodule thing with the vacuum, but you can just walk into it and it pushes it. Um, pushes it for you. So Nova's here. Um, she interprets it as a place of ritual. Uh, if we hold diagonally down into this, we can get to Drem without taking any damage. What Nova has discovered is that she's hungry because she's too far away from the center's source of power to her. Only need to destroy certain enemies. Uh, in these rooms. Do I have to take that damage, but not a problem. Hey, come here. Thank you. Right, there we go. So we did some farming for energy. Um, is what that is in the story. Those particular enemies are called Weederons. Um, evil vegetable things that attack the crops, I guess. Now we're going to perform the sacred rites for Palisade. First we roll the dice. Then we cross the bridge, which tries to throw us off, and then we've got to sacrifice something. In this case, we sacrifice Drem's soup. Very sad. Now Drem's going to introduce us to some new mechanics. Uh, in the form of wrestling, oddly enough. So, things work a little differently to the rest of the game. The wrestling, oh. it's all good. We can just mash the attack button to take the blow. bit of quick time always ends with X or square so. oh come here there we go right lovely now the next bit of um, farming and energy is revealed that she's sick and might die and Nova doesn't understand dying because it's not something that the center uh, brings to people she views it as a source of decay from outside the center's benevolence if you can kind of see where this narrative is going We go on the trade. Day two of rights. Dice. And energy gave us a rose, which we have to sacrifice. But hey, round two of wrestling. The dust bound beat down. Drem's behaviour is a bit different in each one. But then we have to attack and then dodge.
There we go. Gonna be a bit finicky and precise to beat down. Alright, so we've been called out to allergy. Oh no, what's happening? The tumor-like mass on her shoulder has grown. But wait, it's a baby. A baby born of dust, but only the center can create dust, can't it, Nova? If you see where this is going. Here are some of my favorite sound effects in the game. I really enjoy this, just listen. nice and cute. That's Ash Beauty. Um, Energy's baby daughter. Uh, you can see that the Glandilock seed is angry. Um, further showing you what kind of narrative this is. Um, Nova is seeing things that are contrary to what she's been taught. Ooh. Hit the side. And the Glan Loxy doesn't like it. Anyway, round three, Nova has to sacrifice herself. Uh, Ash is very sweet. I like Ash. more um, quick time last one is always square and now we get some Kirby ah oh. I'm trying to get a double there we go that's a double and now we just spam to deflect the thing back and forth now we've got a sequence of cutscenes this would make an excellent time for donations. It's quite pivotal to the story, but as you can see, the story is flying by at quite a pace. in the story Ash has followed you she's desecrating the sacred place of ritual and Nova's really angry so she destroys it bit more cutscene to go Um, going well, Daff. Going well. I'm glad I've been able to record this. Um, I wasn't sure if I would get the chance, but I have got a chance, which is nice. Good to be able to show off some of the newer stuff. Um, a bit more cutscene. You get returned to see Psalmist. He's sad that Palisade's gone. Gives you a poem. And then we get introduced to this guy. He's uh, a bit creepy, a bit weird. Um, sea Visionary, his name is. Um, and he introduces something called the Metaclean, which has a lot of interesting goodies in it, uh, none of which we really need uh, for the purposes of this run. I appreciate you coming, Daff. Thank you. Alright. First, we're grinding some dust. Uh, because by the end of this sequence, we're going to need 150 pieces of dust in the prism. And we can't get all of that in one nice clean go. 
from the next area. So we're going to go into one way. Get a few nice and easy. Thankfully, in the second room of the first one way test chamber, there's a really nice place to grind dust. We need 60. Good time for donations, also. Oh really? That's odd, Daff. Strange. Ooh, one off. Thank you. 64. Nice number. Shout out to Mario. Right, now we can actually leave using the gate. We just go and drop this off here. And now we're on our way. The next area has a number of names. Uh, the overworld place is called the Outer Sands, but the next character we go into, I should specify, uh, could be referred to as No Such Scene, Desert, NPC, GG. Um, and it's a bit of an odd one out, and you'll see why. The first thing is upside down and clipping into the wall. It also has no collision. You can walk straight into it. Through it. And the music's kind of weird. And that's impossible. Um, I should map it out and find out if it really is impossible. Uh, <laughs> and this goes way too far. And you're sideways and it doesn't matter. And then you're upside down and you jump uh, upside down into this thing. Um, this encounter is referred to casually. Uh, it's referred to by the devs in the community as meeting the dolphin. Um, AKA best scene. Yeah, this is, this is quite a place. So, smiley face, it's kind of weird. There are no textures. It's all a bit jumbled. We picked up something there. Um, I can't remember what colour it is, but there are... Oh, no, it's on my splits. That's green. So we picked up the Grenlock, um, which is part of the Trilock collar, uh, which we will come to a little bit later. But we need to pick up three locks. There's the Grenlock, the Blue Lock, and the Red Lock. And now we're in a weird isometric life sim. So, this is Nora. She's going to work. It's semi random. This, um, layout but eventually after i think six doors it is we reach the way out of the apartment block and now we're home from work this is a very story heavy area um but it is also, it is also with the dialogue skip one of the quickest ways to get uh one of the trilocks that's the main goal for this um little bit get the trilocks as quickly as possible all right 
we're back and the gargoyle that Nora has been talking to is now waiting for us. Oh, I have to talk to it. Hello. Easy to forget that. Power on the computer. And sent a spam link and a bunch of messages on social. Bit more cutscene. Good time for donations. And from here on, um, the game gets a bit spooky at this point. It runs a horror sequence. Thankfully for people who don't like horror, there is a way to skip it, um, which we are taking full advantage of because it's a lot faster than going through it. Um, and it lets us get a try lock nice and quickly. Gonna go into Outer Sands East from the north. Gonna make a movement up here. We won't, won't really get to see too much of it here because. Oh, there we go. We talked to it pretty quickly, but there's a big face in there. Um. And this is Orb Sector, Sector 4165. Um, and that face is called Minorma. Uh, this place, I'm sure, will be a crowd pleaser, uh, if you can't tell by its name. <laughs> um, but anyway, we need to get some tokens. Uh, so we talk to Fabrahem, who is the clothes maker, and they agree to give us some tokens if we take some orders for them. But what we just grabbed in that chest is a trilock. Uh, so instead of doing any of what I just said, we're just going to leave. Because we don't need to finish it. Um, all we need is a trilock and then we can go. Orb, yes, precisely. For a moment it looked like the other one was wobbling. That may have been just a strange quirk of things. You've got to talk to the tree that's wobbling. And they also point to the next one. But anyway, it's been a little bit, but here's a proper dimension dive. These things are called tremuloids. We're gonna in, we're gonna meet a sort of game within a game in this bit. But first, a mini game, and then something that will please people who enjoyed the first anodyne. go and ooh, looky here it's the nexus from anodyne one the hub world of anodyne one just sitting here in anodyne two um, and that figure there time the town deacon gives us the nano spark so now we can spark into Pico Scale, which is this really retro looking thing. And now we're in a miniature RPG, all of its own. Wait, one more time. There we go. Um, this is indeed a Bossa Nova remix of Green Sleeve that you're listening to. Isn't it beautiful? And yes, those are the Windows default MIDIs. It's a lovely, lovely little section. This is New The Land, a game within a game. But we're here for the dust and for the trilock. 
so we've got the tri-lock and now we're going to go and get some dust we can grind dust really nicely here uh, in this room which is full of slimes and I'm going to go all the way to 90 well 86 technically because I got 64 got 89 so we're good yeah shout outs to young slime and Aleph slime uh, some of them are dressed up like the um, characters from the previous analgesic productions games very cute and now we can just make our way out we got the lock Now we need to make our way back to that tower we went up in Outer Sands South uh, when we entered Dustbound. But first we've got a bit of um, collecting to do. Just got to grab this. That is the Trilock Collar base, so the collar part itself. We just get it on the way back, nice and easy. Nice little bit of donation time. Perhaps. Thankfully we're not stuck walking slowly. So we are unable to use right scale in this area. And we can pet the dog, by the way. And back in Dustbound, but it's a bit different. It's strange. All clean. All sparkly. Not how we remember it. So there's the card that Drem ripped up at the start of Dustbound. But he taped it back together because we cared. Or well, he, he knew we cared about Palisade. That's the card that she gave to us. Very sweet of him marker of our friendship and now the sad bit where we realize actually the center is evil the gland lock seed is a mind control device um yeah um i should mention as daffodilian has mentioned um this game fairly shortly i think will be patched with simplified chinese and although it's not uh it's not like a lifesaver as such because the dialogue is all fast forwarded in this. It probably would save some time as well. So um, there's that to bear in mind. Um, although it doesn't really affect the run mechanically as such. But an interesting thing to note. Not stuck on the wall there. A bit annoying. Anyway. You can see on my splits uh, the next and last area is called Nano Cleaner Zera. Um, it's a pretty technical area. It's the longest 2D area in the run. It's the hardest 2D area in the run. It's the most technical 2D area in the run. Um, and it has a final boss, which is surprisingly difficult. Um, but first, Got to drop off some dust. So, Nova decides, in this ending at least, uh, that she's going to confront the center. Uh, and to do that, she needs 150 dust in the prism. And 
then the center's gonna have a bit of a go of us, a go at us. But thinking we can bite it, and then we pop the lid off and jump inside. All to the bottom. And we've been taught by Elegy to Dust Channel, as in the little peekaboo minigame we saw Elegy and Ash playing earlier. Um, so, Psalmist and Visionary and Zera, the new nano cleaner, can't see us. But we spark inside her. Granny Lock's not very pleased that we're here. We're going against like everything. So there are these spiny tendril things inside uh, Zera, and also these enemies and bubbles, which are going to play quite a large role in things. And also these little mini Zeras called Zeroids. So there are three mini bosses we need to defeat before we can reach the final boss. Um, and each one of them corresponds to one of those gates. And button puzzles first. We gotta swing the boomerang enemy around. It can be quite finicky. Thankfully, little save point there to deal with our damage. We actually need to deal with the um, boomerang there, which is very handy. Now here's a tough room, I'm going to be quiet with this. We need to make sure that the tendrils don't destroy that spewer so that we can kill the spinies. Oh yeah, the music in here is really good. It's the nail on the head of the sort of focused, determined attitude. I'm going to deal with these. That went really nicely. Okay. angle these just round, hit the slimes. Dust doesn't matter at this point. Here's one of the mini-bosses. It's the cereal that we picked up in the beginning. Um, and Zera has also picked it up, but we need to destroy it so that we can gain access to the Glandilock seed. And the plan is to remove the Glandilock seed from Zera's head so that she can live a life free of the center's mind control. Interesting mechanic here. There are these red gates. I call them blood gates. Oh, come on. No, one minute. Being a bit... There we go, right. You gotta hurt yourself for the blood gate to um, open. But when we're here, we get to the reguloid that we picked up. Reguloids, when you talk to them at the beginning of the game, they behave like cute little dogs. But, uh, it dies like a squeaky toy. We killed the cute little dog robot. We're monsters. I don't know, but not really, not really. 
Although it is kind of sad. Make our way back. That's two of the three gates. Gonna go and get a key. this thing. Stop it trying to hurt us on our way out. Little teleporter puzzle. And then we get asked a question. Who lives, who dies, who deserves it? Uh, but it doesn't matter, so because the old slime takes a while to get there, uh, we just kill the baby. There we go. We need to make sure that we don't kill any of these babies, though. Because that, as you have seen, locks us out. Come on. There we go. can vacuum the cereal and the milk to um, stop them. They just freeze in place. Alright. And that's all of the mini-bosses dealt with. Out we go. To the glandy lock seed. So this is Zero's glandy lock seed. It's not very happy with us. So it tries to punch us with that thing. The big ball it's got. And we can shoot the weak point. And then get into the scared seed within. And then we gotta shoot these little spike things into the bosses on rails at the top in Pico Scale. So we do get a bit more Pico Scale in the later areas of the fight. Uh, the um, arm the glandy lock seed stays extended for longer and also things start shooting at you makes it tougher optimally you can beat this uh, boss in six cycles of the arm punching you but it's quite tricky and I'm gonna John a bit and mention that I'm left-handed so trying to mash with my right hand to shoot is tough But it's not the end of the world if we don't manage. So that's two extra cycles, but we're fine. Okay. This one has floor stuff that can hit you, but it's not really the end of the world if it does. It only does a single point of damage per floor bit, so it doesn't really make a difference. Time is coming up shortly. I'm gonna remove the glandy lock seed. And time is coming up when the last text box closes. After it fades to white, I'll let you know. And time. Excellent. Well, I'm glad I've got that. Sub-120 is a nice thing to have. Um, I believe record at the moment is 118.52, so this is not that far off. Thank you, Daff. I appreciate it. Uh, we got a little ending cutscene here that plays out. Um, sea Visionary reveals his true horror nature. 
because he's a big mouth. Uh, there's not really much more I can say. He tries to eat Psalmist, and then she realizes, actually, hold on. I think this isn't great. So she has a last minute change of heart. And... Then Visionary's out for the count. You saw Zera so seemingly died earlier because she took the Glandulock seed out. She couldn't live without it, they said, but um, actually she just turned into a baby. So, baby Zera. Very sweet. Um, yes, that is a PB for me. Um, I was running against PB splits. So, that is quite nice to have. Nice to have a PB with the new strats in it, which is what I was hoping for. And suddenly Ash is there in 3D, and oh my god, LG2. So yay, happy couple with two little babies and a dog. The end. Out to sea we go. It's a beautiful little game. And... Um, as you'll see in the credits, uh, it's close to my heart because I took part in the QA for this game. I co-led it. Um, and it was a wonderful experience to have, working with Marina Kitaka and Sean Hantani, the devs for this game. Uh, they're great people, and they make great games. Um, so I encourage people to play this, uh, whether they want to speed on it, whether they want to play it casually, whatever they want to do. It's great. Um, and I always like to scroll through the credits. I like to see the credits at the end of my PBs anyway, but look, it's me. Me in the credits. And shout outs to all the other QA testers as well. They did great work, found some things I would never have thought of finding. A few special thanks. Very much, but before we go, post credit scene. So Drem got cleaned by the center, but we left him some soup, so we're gonna teach him what he knows his favorite soup instinct. And then we get there's a little message from Sean here, tells us about some post game stuff. But that is it, that's how I died to many percent. Um, thank you very much for watching. And thank you very much for considering this um, for AGDQ. Uh, it's a pleasure to be able to submit it and to be able to uh, come to the event. Um, and I hope that my passion for the for the game shows through clearly because I care a lot about this game. It's like my baby. I QA tested it. I helped it grow. Um, like Ash to Elegy or Zera to Nova and it would be a lovely thing to be able to show it off on the uh, on the GDQ stage so thanks very much thanks for watching thanks for considering and see you soon